we have discussed how to declare global and local variables inside declare and begin end section within a block and how to use these variables within begin end section using expression statement and SQL statement. This chapter will focus on assigning values to multiple variables using a single snowflake script statement. We have seen the limitation in our chapter 4 and chapter 5 while declaring and assigning values to variables. So if you look into the line number 7 and 8, where I see a simple stored procedure is trying to declare two variables called minimum balance and maximum balance and both these variables are coming from a single select statement as a default expression and I need to run this query twice to assign the values. But what if I would like to assign the values using a single snowflake script statement the way it is shown in line number 20 but that syntax is not right and if you try to create that stored procedure, it will end with an error. If this is my requirement, how would I get it done? And what are the limitations? So stay tuned until the end of this video to know how Snowflake scripting solve this requirement. We have already covered many important concepts in this playlist like importance of Snowflake scripting for stored procedure, its common usage, best practices, block structure, global and local variable declaration, and the colon notation to use the variable in expression and SQL statements. If you haven't seen this chapter yet, please watch it after completing this video. The links for all the videos are available in the description section below. And this tutorial will focus on multiple value assignment to multiple variables using single snowflake scripting statement. So welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified. I will be using the free trial enterprise edition of Snowflake on AWS for this video. You can test all the SQL script used in this tutorial in free trial edition. Refer to the description below for details or downloadable content. For optimal video clarity, ensure that you are watching this video in its highest resolution, which is 4K. If you wish, you can also speed up playback rate to 1.25x or 1.5x to learn faster. You can jump to a specific chapter. The chapter detail is available in the description below or move your cursor to the chapter marking in the video bar. For discussing specific SQL challenges, design issues or architectural pattern or any other feedback or a new topic request, you can connect with me in two simple ways. Send a direct message on my Instagram or join my exclusive Facebook group. To join the Facebook group, simply scan the QR code shown on the screen. And yes, if you are a dedicated Snowflake professional looking to enhance your skill in more structured manner, explore my premium Udemy courses to conquer your fear and level up your Snowflake expertise. So let's start. So this is my simple stored procedure called my procedure and it has two global level variable called min underscore balance, max underscore balance. The data type and the default expression are declared with the variables inside the declare section. Now in line number 11 using select statement the into keyword is assigning the min and max customer balance values from the customer table respectively to the min underscore balance and max underscore balance variables. Here the select statement must return a single row and the first value from the select clause gets assigned to first variable after the into keyword and second value from the select clause gets assigned to the second variable after the into keyword. So the number of select expression or values must match to the number of variables else this snowflake script statement ends with an error. It is also important to remember on the data type. The snowflake scripting engine tries to cast the data type as much as possible and when it fails to cast the data type, it again ends with an error. So let's jump to our snow site and see all of them in action. And please remember to hit the like button if you have been benefiting from my content and if it is contributing value to your snowflake learning journey. So this is my snowflake snow site web UI and this is my first worksheet called value assignment. If you look into this stored procedure, 
line number 9 and line number 10 are having two variables minimum balance and maximum balance data type number and we have a default values assigned to this variable on line number 13 i have a select statement and if i just run this statement let's see the result of the select statement first So my minimum balance is minus 999 and my max balance is 9999. So when this select statement will be executed, the minimum balance will be assigned to min underscore balance variable and maximum balance value would be assigned to max underscore balance variable. Let's create this proc. When I describe the stored proc, I would like to validate the body. And if I look into the body, here I have this colon followed by the variable name and colon again followed by the variable name. So no change. Now let's execute this stored proc. So I got the 9999 and if I hover this, this is my fixed data type. If I just change this value from max to min and recreate this proc. I got the minimum value. So if you have multiple variables and if you would like to assign values to the multiple variables using a single statement, this is how you can do that. And this can also go as an anonymous block without a stored procedure body. And let me execute this. So this is how the anonymous block can be executed. And if you are running this stored procedure, using SnowSQL or your legacy web UI, you have to make sure that you enclose your entire body in double dollar, else it will not work. Likewise, and if you are running your anonymous block using SnowSQL or legacy web UI, you have to write execute immediate followed by double dollar sign and you have to enclose the body with double dollar sign else it will not be executed we have covered this entire concept in our chapter 3 so you can go and watch the chapter 3 if you have not watched it now let's quickly see another scenario what if i do not use the colon notation right after the into keyword will it work or will it not work let's create this stored procedure with name my procedure underscore without underscore colon. So the procedure got created. Now let's describe the procedure. If you see the body, it does not have the colon notation. Now let's call this stored procedure and see the result. So I got the result as expected. So the colon notation is not must, even though this looks like a SQL statement, but it is Snowflake SQL scripting. And when you are using a SQL scripting and what we have learned in our previous episode, that if you are using a variable within the Snowflake scripting, you don't need to use the colon notation and variable can be used without any issue. And that's why I assume, even though the documentation says that you need to have a colon notation, but this example clearly shows even without a colon notation, you can still use the into keyword and assign this expression to this variable. Now let's see another scenario. What if my select statement returns more than one row and this is my new worksheet. So if you look into the line number 11, I have removed the min max function and I am just getting the account balance by applying a limit clause. So let's execute this first. Let me call the SP. So I got the result which is, so it looks good. But what if I change from one to two? It is recreated and now let me call this stored proc. So here it clearly says that a select into statement expect exactly one return row but got two. So during the creation of the stored procedure, it will not throw any compilation issue. However, when you call the stored procedure, 
you will see this particular exception. Now let's see another behavior and this is my new worksheet called count mismatch. So we understood that the number of expression within the select query should match the number of variables right after the into keyword. So here I have two expression and I have two variables which works without any issue. But what if I add another expression in the select statement, let's see what happens. So my stored proc got created successfully and this line does not complain and let me call it. So when I executed it, it says number of select values or expression does not match with the number of into variables. Okay. What if I remove one of this variable entry from here? Let's see what is my error message. So again, my stored proc got created without any complaint. But when I execute it, it says select values are two, but into variables is one. Okay. So by looking at this error statement, it is very clear that this line has to be corrected. And it is clearly indicating this is error line seven at position four. And if you look, this is my seventh line again, starting from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks good. So by looking at the error message, you should know which statement of your stored proc body has to be corrected. Now let's try to understand the data type mismatch behavior. And this is my another worksheet called data type mismatch. If you look into this stored procedure, here I have two variables called balance and customer name. Balance is of data type number and cust name is of data type text. Here on line number 14, I am still fetching account balance, account balance and trying to assign the output of this two expression into balance and customer name. Let's create this stored proc and see the behavior. So it got created successfully. Now let me call it. So I got 711.56 when this is a customer name. So this account balance got typecasted to the customer name, which is of text type. Okay. In the second scenario, I have just flipped my customer name and account balance and the customer name going into the balance, which is a number data type. And if I execute it, let's see what happens. So my stored proc got created without any issue. And now let's call the proc. Here it clearly says on line number seven, numeric value customer is not recognized. So this is having text value, which is going to be assigned on my balance and Snowflake scripting engine is not able to fit this value into this data type. And that's why it ended with an error. And if you look into the message, it is clearly saying my line number seven on position four. So starting from declare this first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh line and position four might be this. So while working with this kind of requirement, make sure so your data type definition must match with this select expression. We have understood how to assign multiple values to multiple variables using select statement by having into keywords in your select query and some of the important thing which we have to remember while using this kind of select and into statement. In the next chapter, we will discuss the scope of global and local variables along with nested block. Be sure not to miss the upcoming chapter which features a hands-on tutorial that is crucial for understanding how to write Snowflake scripting while writing stored procedures and anonymous blocks. I hope you got something valuable from this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Your support not only recognizes the work behind this free content,
but also helps other to discover this playlist and if you think it can help someone else in your team feel free to share thanks for watching and let's spread the knowledge and growth together